please join me in the call to worship. The days are coming when God's promises are fulfilled. The days are coming when God leads us to a path of righteousness. The days are surely coming when the kingdom of God draws near. Let us worship our God of possibilities and hope. Thanks be to God who guides us through life. Let us pray. Advent is a time to hear again of God's redeeming work. Advent is a time to hear again of God's reconciling love. Advent is a time to hear again of God's unmerited grace. Advent is a time to hear again of our ultimate hope. Give us ears, O Lord, and help us to hear. Amen. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is blessing me right now. Woke me up this morning and started me on my way. And he gave me what I needed, the light of a brand new day. He gave the water that comes from rain. He gave the food that comes from earth. He made it all, he gave it all, he made me what I'm worth. Blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is blessing me. Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is blessing me. Yeah, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now. Loving God, Give light to our eyes and peace to our hearts. Help us watch and wait in hope for the coming of Jesus. Today, we light the first candle. The first candle reminds us that as we wait upon the Lord, we do so with a sense of heightened awareness. In a world where our attention is easily diverted in many directions, Advent is a time to quiet ourselves and listen to God's word with expectant ears. This Advent, may we hear and receive the message of the one who continues to speak. Gracious Lord, thank you for the ways you continue to speak to a world in need. Through both prophets and angels, you declared the message of hope, the way of healing, and the coming of a Savior. As you spoke in the days of old, we know you continue to speak to us today. As we begin our Advent journey, grant us ears that truly hear and hearts to openly receive. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
scripture reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We thank our liturgists for reading our scripture this morning, taken from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter verses 3 through 9. We want to focus our attention primarily on that ninth verse, which reads, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. These are the words that form the basis of our message today, and I want to share with you from this subject the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of God. Let us pray. God, we do thank you for another opportunity to be gathered around your word. We thank you, God, because you, we know that your word gives us hope, help, strength, encourage us, instructs us. And so, Holy Spirit, have your way and speak to us from God's word. Give us ears to hear what you would say, but let us be obedient to whatever you instruct us to do, that in our obedience, our lives will be made better. God, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, draw me near, near God to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near God to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even God again, give me the gift of preaching. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let me begin by saying God is the model of what it means to be faithful. Faithfulness, the definition of it, is a quality of being faithful. Being faithful means to having and showing fidelity, loyalty, consistency, devotion, trueness, true-heartedness, dedication, commitment, allegiance, adherence, dependability, reliability, trustworthiness, steadfastness, accuracy, precision, justness, truth, truthfulness, and authenticity. We cannot see or touch God, so we have to learn about him through his attributes. Faithfulness of one is one of God's attribute, attributes. We give a lot of attention to God's attribute of love. Because of his love, we have all enjoyed the blessing that we receive from him. His primary gift of love is that of Jesus. And as a result of Jesus, we receive salvation. The attributes of God make up God's character. These attributes are those things that we would use to describe our great God. We do the same thing as we think about other people. We describe them by their attributes. We will describe them by their physical attributes or by their character features. Today, we want to look at God's attribute of faithfulness. A college man walked in the photography studio with a framed picture by his girlfriend. He wanted the picture duplicated. This involved removing it from the frame. In doing this, the studio owner noticed an inscription on the back of the, the photograph. It was written, My dearest Tom, I love you with all my heart. I love you more and more each day. I will love you forever and ever. I am always yours for all eternity. It was signed by Diane. But it continued to a P.S. If we ever break up, I want this picture back. We're going to see what, what it is for God that is faithful. We want to see God in his faithfulness. 
But one thing I can assure you of, there is no P.S. There's no taking it back. There's no, I want it back if things don't work out. Now, I believe that faithfulness is an attribute that the whole world would be would be better if we had a little more of. The world really needs something that we can count on. We can look from very heights of leadership to the very bottom of society and see that faithfulness is something that we need to work on. Today, we're going to see what it means to be faithful. Then we'll make the case that God is faithful and finally that God expects us to be faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? When we think about being faithful, what comes to our mind is faithful, steadfast, dedicated, dependable, and worthy of trust. Mostly dependable. We can count on God. We don't have to guess. He's dependable. The word is derived from a Hebrew root having the basic meaning to trust a person or to believe a statement. This is the same root that gives us the word amen. The derived meaning is that one who is described is trustworthy, dependable, trusting, or loyal. Moses was faithful in all of God's household, Numbers 12 and 7. Faithfulness is used to describe the relationship of God and Israel in Deuteronomy 7 and 9. The faithfulness of God keeps his covenant and the faithful people keep his commandments. In the New Testament, the adjective faithful has the same fundamental meaning as the Old Testament word. The meaning is that one who the meaning that the one so described is trustworthy and loyal. The root idea is that one has loyalty towards another person or towards God. The faithful person is steadfast, unchanging, thoroughly grounded in relationship to the other. This sort of fidelity and faithfulness is used in both the Old and New Testament to describe God's relationship to the world and to describe the quality of relationship that Israel and Christians are called upon to have with God and one another. A faithful person is one who will finish the race. A faithful person is one who can count on and keep their word. They will keep the promise that they make, even if it costs them something to do it. I'm sure some of you have been married for many years and have made some personal sacrifices in order to remain faithful to your spouse. The world needs to see more faithful and trustworthy people. God is faithful. How do we know that God is faithful? We know that God is faithful because the scriptures tell us so. What we know about God and what we know about who God is and what we know about what God does is what God has revealed to us, made known to us in his word. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Psalms 36 and 5, your loving kindness, O God, extend to the heavens, your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Psalms 89 and 1, I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever to all generations. I will make your name faithfulness with my mouth. These are these and many other passages tell us that God is faithful. Many others speak of God's faithfulness in order to comfort and encourage us as Christians. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. First Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation have taken you but such as common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure. First Thessalonians 5, 24, faithful is he who's called you. Another reason we know that God is faithful because God models faithfulness. God has showed us in, the, in, our, in his dealing with us that he is faithful. God has showed us that he is trustworthy. He has showed us that he is dependable. He has showed to us that he will keep his word. 
God has kept his promises. He made promises to Abraham concerning having many descendants, even though Abraham and Sarah were very old and had no children. God kept his promise to David, to Israel, and Joseph, just to name a few. Faithfulness is the central to God's characters. We find that faithfulness or trustworthiness is something that has to be a central part of who God is. If you could not trust God to do what he said, then where would we be? God exhibits his character as worthy of the love and confidence of man and assures us that he will so certainly fulfill all the promises that he has made. God is faithful to what he has promised. God keeps his promises. God, this is one of the reasons why we love him and trust him. Who are who are you more apt to trust? Someone who has a proven track record or someone who has empty promises? God has showed himself over and over again. God has proved himself over and over again. God has kept his word over and over again. Bottom line is God is faithful because God is faithful. He expects us to be faithful. God expects us to be faithful. Remember the old cliche, a man's word is his bond, meaning a man's word is a contract. A man will keep his word. A man is faithful to his word. If he put his word out, it is so. He will keep his word. When a man puts out his word, it means something. It means that he, that everything is on the line for him to keep it. The condition, this condition is our faithfulness to God. We are to, not only as we've uh, made promise, God has made promises to us, but that we have made promises to God. And God expects us to keep, keep our word. The scripture says, better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break a vow. This not a, does not imply sinless perfection, but it means that we have taken count of being a Christian and if we were for some reason were taken to court and we were accused of being a Christian we would be found guilty a Christian is one who in all that he do tries to keep his promises as God keeps his promises to us are you a good runner what about 50 percent of the time are you a good runner are you a good runner? Maybe 80% of the time. What about 95%? You have to run the whole race. God ran the whole race for us. And Jesus did not give up. He, We started this race and he expects us to run all the way to the end. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith or our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And our conclusion, being faithful means being trustworthy. We can trust God. He has a track record that we can follow. He has always been and always will be faithful. We can count on God when we can't count on nobody else. We can count on God when things are good. We can count on God when things are bad. We can count on God when we don't see him or don't feel him. We can still count upon God because he is faithful. He is trustworthy. He is loyal. He is reliable. God is faithful to his word. If God said it, God will surely bring it to pass. The scripture said he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If God has said it, he will surely bring it to pass. God is a man of his word. God is a model of what it means to be faithful. God is loyal and consistent. He's devoted. He's trustworthy. He's true-heartedness. He's dedicated. He's committed. He is steadfast. He is accurate. He is truthfulness. He is authentic. What God said he would do, God will do. Faithfulness is part of who God is. It's part of his character. But what about you? Only you can answer that question. What about you? 
How faithful are you to God? Have you, have you been faithful to God? Being faithful to God is for your benefit. You will receive the blessings from God because of your relationship to God and the fact that you are faithful to God. You will be the one who collects the promise of eternal life in your being faithful. In closing, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.